So we're talking about yarn dominance in this clip, and I just wanted you to see this one lovely sweater that has um, a mostly white area that would be your main pattern. So that would be the dominant yarn, would be this, this white color. Um, and in the swatch as well, you've got the same white color, but just a different background. Here you can see in this swatch the differences between having one yarn dominant versus the other. On this side, you can see that the gray yarn is dominant, and you can see that it looks like it's coming out from the pattern, and it's more bold. On this one, the red yarn was held as being dominant, and you can see that it makes the gray look like it's receding into the background a little bit. So I'm naturally a thrower when I learned how to knit. That's how I taught myself to knit. And so with Fair Isle Knitting, I would knit with the dominant yarn underneath, and you can see it comes underneath and the non-dominant yarn always going above. I don't twist them together in any way on the back, but just like that. I keep my tension even by making sure it's spaced out evenly as I go, and that helps to keep the tension even. Uh, if your tension is too tight, uh, your floats, which is what you call these pieces that are floating behind that aren't being used, if those are too tight, your piece will pucker, and even though you try to block it out, it won't be able to get rid of it completely. If those floats are too, are too loose, then the next stitch that you knit of the new color will be kind of messy looking and maybe a little bit bigger than the rest of the stitches. So sometimes in a pattern, you will have some areas that are really long, and if they're more than, you know, five, six, seven stitches, you're gonna to wanna to catch the other yarn that's not being used behind that yarn so that it doesn't pull out of place. So you would just do that. And there are many different ways to do it as well. So I'm showing you how to do this all with the throwing method. But catching floats is actually easier if I do the two-handed continental method. So with the two-handed method, I use continental on the right, on the left hand, and I do um, throwing on the right. So I would throw, and then I would do the continental. And if I have a, um, a section where I am knitting a long section of this raw yarn in my right hand, and I want to catch the other one in a float, I can just simply put it, the needle under it and catch it like that, and keep going. Then when I go to knit that other color, I just pull it a little bit to make sure that the float is not too loose or too tight. Another option that some people do is they knit the whole thing without catching their yarn, uh, the float yarn in the back, and they wait till the next row, in which case they will actually stop and then use our needle to pick up that, that float in the back and then knit through it like that.